Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make music like I.O. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets, all that stuff in this video in the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. So, this loop you heard in the intro, the first sound that we have here is the main bass, which sounds like this. So this is the MIDI for this, it's just sliding up from D to D sharp and then on that last upbeat there, it goes back down to D. This one is very simple, you can see like I said it's these overlapping notes. That's kind of what's doing it. With this one it's more about the synth and how that's working with the synth. So here is the sound, it's made using operator, you can see it's actually a very simple sound, it's literally just a square wave and a sine wave doing some FM. If I turn off this filter here, you can hear that a little bit more. So that's pretty much what we have coming out of there. And then I have those going into a low pass filter. So that's what it sounds like just going straight into the low pass. And there's a distortion after that that we'll talk about. But yeah, so this is a really simple sound. It's just about making this kind of like big, harmonically rich sound that has a lot of stuff going on, and then kind of filtering that back with some subtractive synthesis, aka subtracting harmonics from the sound, and then distorting it later. So yeah, after that, then we got a bit of chorus, just kind of spreads the sound out, gives it a nice texture. Then we have this amp. This is the distortion I was talking about. So like I said, that's how you get this sound. It's just a very like, like you take the very harmonically rich sound, then you filter it down, and then you distort it like this. And yeah, I like using the amp simulator, like even other ones like guitar rig, amplitude, stuff like that. It's just a really good way to give basses like an interesting distortion. It adds a lot of character and texture to the sound. After that, we have a bit of saturator. This is just to fatten the sound up. Here's without it. And then with it, so you can hear it just kind of ties the whole thing together. And then we have a compressor side chaining it to the kick. And that is it for the main bass. The next sound we have here is this little tom sound, which sounds like this. So what this is doing is this is playing on pretty much ev or yeah, on every upbeat. And it's just kind of giving it more of like a... Like a do 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 kind of rhythm it makes the whole thing like a lot more intense as subtle as it is if I turn this off and play the whole mix that doesn't sound as good as this And yeah, if you listen to IO's tracks that sound like this, I believe he does this quite a bit in those as well. So for this one, it's made using operator. It's very simple. It's just playing D. That's the key we're in. And then the sound is just a sine wave going through a pitch envelope. So I got this pitch envelope on here. And yeah, it's very simple. One thing you'll notice here is this like initial thing. So this allows you, I also did this with the amp envelope. Usually by default, it would just be like this. But if you turn that up and then you turn up the attack, you can kind of like give the transient and the sound a little bit more of like a like a bed like that. Like it kind of rests a little bit more there. And then I did the same thing with the pitch envelope. So yeah, and then after that we have the kick, which sounds like this. So this one's pretty simple. It's really more about the type of sound you're choosing. You just want one of these big like very just kind of kicks. I would almost recommend looking through like electro sample packs. Like when I say electro, I mean like 2012 EDM electro, not like Benson Interceptor, but like, you know, that kind of stuff. Just these very like hard hitting, abrasive, clicky kicks like this. I've got that going through a bit of drum bus and then just an EQ8. You can see that's just boosting the high end, helps to bring out that clickiness. And yeah, that's it for the kick. I have all that low end stuff, the bass, the tom, and then the kick in a group together. It's just helping to kind of tie it all together and make the low end tighter sounding. Here is with nothing on the group.
and then with everything. So you can see the difference there. And how much stronger it makes the whole thing. So the first thing here is the EQs. We just have these to focus the sound a little bit more. It's cutting out some mud on both of them. And then on the second one, I'm boosting the low end a bit to make the low end come out a bit more. And also boosting the mid range. This just helps with like the punchiness of the kick. And also with the bass a little bit. And yeah, and then we just have the only other thing here, which is this drum bus. So here's without that. And with it. So once again, you can hear how much this brings out the bass. Or basses, I should say. And how much like fatter it makes the line. You know, this is really just gluing everything together and making it all feel like one as opposed to, you know, just all these different things playing at once. Yeah, that is it for the long bus. The next thing that we have here is this little lead super saw-ish sort of sound, which sounds like this. So this is a sound I've heard in a lot of iOS tracks. Not even just the stuff that sounds like this, like even the more techno type of stuff. But here are the notes for this one. It's just going between D and D sharp, you know. Very simple scale we're following for this track. The simpler is always better. Um, but yeah, for the sound on this one, it's made using wavetable. What we have here is two saw waves. They are an octave apart. And then I've got this going into a low pass filter. And the low pass has an envelope on it, you can see in the matrix there, which is the amp envelope, so. Yeah, you can see what that's doing. With this one, I found the key was just like the way you shape it. If you just leave it like it is by default, this doesn't sound right. But if you make this really quick and punchy like that, you can hear like, there it is. It gives you like the right kind of stab sound. The only other thing we got going on there inside the synth is just this unison here. You can see I've got it on the classic setting and I've got the voices on five, the amounts all the way up. So it makes it a super saw. I turn this off again here. Not the same thing. So yeah, after that we have a bit of reverb. You can see with this one, I've just shortened the size and K time a bit. So it's just kind of making it a bit shorter, a bit tighter as well. Like you really hear this in between the notes because it's not just a long. It's like kind of like that. After that, we have a bit of drum bus to fatten the sound up. Here's without this. And then with it, so you can hear how important that is. Then we just have a compressor side chaining into the kick, as well as this high pass filter. Just cutting on some lawn. As you can hear with this sound, there was quite a bit of lawn. And although that would work well if it was just the kick and this sound, you can hear if we play this with the lawn bus. It's kind of messy when we have all that lawn in there, but when we cut it out, there we go. Everything fits together a lot better. And yeah, that is it for the Super Saw Wavetable Stab. The next thing we have here is the clap, which sounds like this. This is two layers. We have this one and this one. And so right off the bat, you will notice with that first one, it's a little bit behind the beat. You can see the second one is hitting right on the grid. The first one's a little bit behind. So this is because if you listen to this, I'll play it with the kick, you can hear it even more. Here there's a little bit of that clap right before the kick there. Like it's not perfectly... It's not perfectly on the grid. That is the thing with this clap. You want that, you want to have that little kind of like shift into the clap. So that's the purpose of this layer basically, is to have that. And it's a little bit the punch as well. But yeah, it's just giving it that soft kind of like into the clap. And then the second layer, that's where like the real attack and the real punch comes from. And yeah, with both of these, we got a little bit of processing on them. I've got some drum bus on the first one, as well as an EQ8, which is boosting the high end a bit to really make the high, to really make the high end come out. I noticed when I was comparing this against reference tracks, it really needs to have like that sharp high end to it. And then for the second one, we just have a bit of drum bus, kind of fattening it up. 
And yeah, so then I have those in a group together, kind of helps to process them together to make everything just kind of feel more cohesive. This is what really makes it feel like one clap sample as opposed to like, oh, there's two claps playing at a time here. So here's with no processing. And then with it, so you can hear what I'm talking about. So yeah, just pretty standard stuff here. Bit of drum bus gluing everything together. Bit of EQ8 counting out the lawn. Doing a bit of a mid-range boost as well. And that is it for the clap. And then the last thing that we have here are these hi-hats, which sound like this. So these are really simple. It's just this one, which is just playing 16th notes, like a closed hi-hat. Then we have this open hi-hat. Playing on the upbeats. And yeah, with this one, it's more just like the mixing. Like if you listen, the closed hi-hat is very quiet compared to the open hi-hat. If I bring it up in volume, and try to make them more even. You can hear it doesn't sound quite right. But when we put this kind of more behind in the mix, it fits together a little bit better and everything feels like it's in the right place. With this one, I've got these two in a group, just like I've been doing with pretty much everything here. You can see I've just got a bit of drum bus to kind of like fatten these up a bit, make them a bit stronger. This without it, and then with it, so you can hear the difference. And then we also have this EQ8 cutting out the lawn, boosting the high end a little bit to make the hi hats a bit brighter. And that is it for the hi hats. And that is also going to be it for this video, guys. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.